Hi everybody, welcome to today's stream. Let me know if my voice it sounded good. The music is not too loud and everything is working fine for you on your side. Let me know if everything is okay. Um, welcome everybody, we are a lot of people today, looks like uh, talking about reliefs it's a very popular topic, so many people waiting for the streaming and many people already connected to the stream, thank you all for being here, watching my, my stream. Okay, uh, looks like everything is perfect, perfecto. Hola. Hola a todo el mundo. Yeah, hello from the cold Canada. It's already cold there now. Here in Spain, it's not cold yet. So um, I'm living in the north of Spain, but uh, we, are, we are still having a, a springtime. We are finishing the summer and it's not too cold here. Hello from, from Russia. A lot of people from Russia think today. Plus 15, yeah. So more or less like this, like here. Okay, maybe here we can be now around 22, maybe five, 
or even more than five degrees like you hey maxim from poland okay 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 looks like uh, many many different countries see Yurus or see Hurus from Egypt welcome and everything looks like it uh, it's okay so we can we can go ahead where's my pencil here so today as I have been publishing during the week I'm gonna talk today about the sculpting reliefs in Seabrush. I'm gonna explain to you my workflow or my tips or I don't like to say tips because I think that everything is already invented. So I can say my way of working or my workflow. Hope that uh, will be useful for you. I know maybe some of you already are doing reliefs or working for reliefs. I make a lot of reliefs, a lot of commissions for related for for jewelry uh, about reliefs. Reliefs is a very common topic on jewelry design. So you can make, uh, for example, the coin I'm gonna make today, you can use this relief as an ancient or as an old coin design for, uh, I don't know, for a pendant, for a cufflinks, for a charm, or um, maybe, I don't know, for, uh, for a signet, for a signet ring. There are a lot of uh, a, l a lot of usage of uh, reliefs inside of jewelry. So to, for today, I'm going to explain to you my workflow, how I work for reliefs. There are many ways to do the same thing, or many people are doing, or are using different techniques. I select uh, hello from France, London, France. Whoa, a lot of people, a lot of countries. Saludos desde Perú. Hola, Jesús. From Argentina, from Argentina. Okay, As I, I didn't say it before, but if you have any question or any comments or whatever you want, you can leave it on your on the chat. I'm gonna keep an eye on your questions. I'm gonna try to pay as more attention as possible about your questions. So I'm gonna try to answer all of your questions. So, okay. Santiago, hola, desde Colombia. Well, a lot of countries today. We are a lot of people today. We are a lot of, I'm very happy with you. Uh, we are from Taiwan, <laughs> all around the world. Many people are interested in on, on sculpting reliefs. I know, I know. It's a very popular, and there are a lot of uh, a lot of work for for reliefs. You can make reliefs. So I'm going to talk about reliefs applied to jewelry designs, or I have made some of the time for for big pieces, uh, for CNC machines, for made in good or in, in stone. Uh, there are a lot of work if we talk about uh, relief sculpting. Ukraine, Malaysia. Hi, Daddy. Welcome. So. The bad thing about this stream is I don't see your avatar. I just see your, the text, your, what you are typing. Okay, so I have, I have selected uh, face because I think faces are uh, difficult to make, or at least for me, or faces or portraits. It's, uh, it's more difficult. That's the reason why I select uh, this kind of uh, profile, side view, uh, ancient coin. It, it's, I think it's uh, from Macedonian, a uh, very old Macedonian, or I don't know how to pronounce it, I think I'm, I'm pronouncing it well, Macedonian or Egypt or Greek uh, coin. And it's very common, very typical. Many, um, I have um, I have received many many commissions for mixed release, for example, for for with faces of uh, um, famous people or even familiars or many many different applications. And for today, I'm gonna explain to you which is my way of working. What I have to what I have to make a relief, a face relief, relief from Macedonia. Yeah, yes, yeah, from Macedonia. Yeah, what happens with the coin? Yeah. Good afternoon. India, okay. So the best, uh, you know, I'm gonna put my volume about my music. So it's too loud on my headphones. 
So, okay, I'm gonna put it here. Okay, this is going to be a coin. So this is the first step that I take. Let's see if the, let's put in a real example. We can say that I have received a, a, a commission from a client who is requesting this relief. Uh, it's gonna be used on, on a cufflinks, for example. And the client is saying that uh, the diameter the total diameter should be around 15 millimeters. Maybe it can be a, also use it on a charm, on a bracelet, charm bracelet. And maybe we can, maybe around 15 or maybe no bigger than 17 millimeter. <laughs> kind of from the dark side of the moon, yeah. It's a good place, should be a good place that place yes so i have said before many places today even in the moon so i'm gonna take first the, fir the first step that i'm gonna take is i'm gonna grab a cylinder drop it on the canvas get into edit mode make polymers i'm gonna squeeze it a little bit and i'm gonna make first i'm gonna set first the the diameter of the coin this is not going to be a coin this is going to be a a piece for a cufflink or for a charm or even for a pendant or maybe you can use it on a on a signet ring if you want but i want to know this is going to be the the diameter of this what i'm gonna make do it again the diameter so it should be this diameter i think as I said before, not bigger, around, let's say, 17 millimeters. I'm going to use the, the scale master. I'm going to set first the units. So we are going to work in millimeters. So clicking on this box. So this is a, this is a existing measurement for the disc. It's 2 by 2. It's a 2 millimeter diameter and 0.2 now uh, millimeters but uh, we said that we are, i'm going to make uh, gonna make it 17 resize it all so now i am working from now with real measurements okay from it the before we already had real measurements but this is our the i can say better call it's uh the final 3D printing measurements. It's another way to say the, the same thing. Gracias a ti por estar aquí eh, viéndolo. Y sí, algún día haré un tutorial, algún tutorial en español, alguna retransmisión en español. So, and uh, to start talking about a realistic thing, this is already, this is the thickness of this. This is less than three millimeters. So I am using my caliper to know that I am making things. Yeah, maybe we can stay. It's, it's good. I'm going to turn this off because I only want to change this axis, the Y axis. Let's say 2.5 millimeters. So now it's 17 by 2.5 millimeter. This is going to be the base, okay? The base. The next step that I'm gonna check is, I'm gonna apply, I'm gonna paint a cube. Hola Álvaro, bienvenido. Uh, sí, gracias, gracias por estar aquí, a ver si tenemos la oportunidad de vernos por, por aquí. So, I'm gonna paint now a cube. I'm gonna paint a cube. Select the cube. Now the cube is very small, so we need to make it bigger. Like this. I'm gonna squeeze it up. Something. Maybe we can put it here inside. Here. Doesn't matter if it's exactly in the middle, a little bit to the right or to the left. I prefer to be closer to the surface. So let's see here. And I, one thing that I like to make is when I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this cube for make the the back cut. I'm gonna to to make the boolean on the back to make things flat on the back 
this is the only reason why I'm going to use this cube. But I like to change the topology. The way that I change the topology to, the, to this cube, again, I click on group and normal. So I, we have one polygroup for each side. So now going to geometry series measure. Let's try to get a double amount of polygons, keep the groups and adapted size to zero. So click on series measure. Now we have a cleaner topology. Let's click on series measure again many times, still getting a more dense mesh. So this is going to be the the where's my coin here? This is going to be the front side, this is going to be the back side. Okay. Uh, uh, ¿Qué material usas para el, para el preview? Para el... I don't know what you mean. Alan is asking what kind of material I am using for the preview. For the preview, this is... I, I made a photo. I made a, a composition inside of... of uh, inside of Seabrose. I just uh, grabbed the, the picture and attached it to a cylinder to cast the shadow on the, on the canvas. Uh, are you going to allow for shrinkage or are you dynamic or go up in resolution? Mm, are you going to allow for shrinkage? I don't know what you mean, but I understand about shrinkage. It's a shrinkage percentage that you, are got, that you are going to have if you are going to use more manufacturing process. I don't know if you are referring to a manufacturing process or you are referring to a dynamis or do dynamis or go up in resolution. I'm going to use, mainly I'm going to use the dynamis. For most of my jobs, I most of the time I use dynamis. Maybe I can say for more than 50% of the cases I use dynamis instead of regular polymers. Um, special cases, I only use uh, C modeler and regular polymers, but most of the cases I use a Dynamis and a Sculptis Pro. When we are talking about uh, sculpting processes, where we need to uh, carve, sculpt, and uh, free forms sculpting, I, I mean. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Hello, Colombia. Well, okay, so let's go. So next step, the client, one of the first things that I ask when I receive a, a relief commission is to know the depth, the depth or the thickness of the piece. I am saying that, for example, this is going to be the head, something like this. I'm watching from, from this view now. From the back, this is going to be the thickness. So one very important thing about the reliefs is the maximum, the maximum, the maximum depth or the maximum height or whatever you can call it is the the maximum distance from the base till the highest points. In this case, maybe I can say we can say that the highest point is going to be the ear, could be this point, because. The head is going to start growing from this point. It's going to start growing and growing till reaching the the ear and going back, going back. And this is going to be the neck, and the neck is going to be almost like this. So we may we can say the highest point is going to be this point, the ear. And if we have a, a 70 millimeter diameter uh, thing or diameter coin, maybe. Uh, Maybe for a good, uh, for a well-defined relief, if we are above 0.3 millimeters, maybe we are going to get, we're going to have enough room for add details. But uh, in some cases, the, the, my clients are requesting to me to make things below 0.3 millimeters. In this case, they are, with, in this case, we are talking about more uh, for coins or metals and things like this. Here, we have a very thin space. Uh, to add the tails and to start creating the volumes, but for today, maybe we are gonna stay at the highest point at 0.4, or maybe I'm gonna try to stay below 0.4 millimeters. Try to don't go more than uh, 0.5 millimeters, half of a millimeter, because. 
0.5 is gonna is gonna be too thick so let's say 0.4 at it at the maximum at the maximum point but uh, we're gonna check this after because during the sculpting process we are going to check if uh, we are using the a right depth or a right height because uh, maybe it's too maybe it's too thick or maybe it's too thin maybe we can adjust it later but uh, for from now it's it's going to be a good idea to have to be here for this i'm gonna i'm gonna make a new template uh look look lori will the mess shrink as you dynamess no it doesn't shrink it sh should not shrink it if you are using the uh, the right resolution for the dynamess you're not going to shrink the 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 mess i use i don't use most of the time i use i don't use this dynamess button i use this dynamess Inside of the plugins, I have installed this Dynamis utility where I have this button. When I can decide the amount of polygons I want for my Dynamis, I'm going to use this instead of this. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Hello, 50 designs. I'm so obsessed with the way you work and the final output you deliver. Lots of uh, thank, thank you very much. I really appreciate Okay. Hola, Valerie. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a duplicate for this, for the coin. I'm going to make the, the coin, I'm going to make a duplicate, I'm going to push it here on the surface. I'm going to match it to the surface of the other, and I'm going to make the template for the highest point that I don't need, that I try to avoid to go over that uh, that value uh, clicking now it's already has the other one so we said that we are gonna use this point four millimeters yeah I forgot to turn this off shit I'm gonna undo it do it now I forgot to turn this off again and you are okay so now we are here maybe let's say instead of 0.5 millimeters resize of tool well maybe it's gonna be too thin maybe maybe it's going to be too thin Maybe in the, in the original relief looks like it's a bit higher. Let's say 0.8. As the I am talking about the maximum, the maximum height. So so this is going to be I'm gonna rename this. This is the max maximum height. The rename again. This is the max. This is the maximum depth, for example. This is going to be the coin itself. Base coin. And this one doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to put this below this one. So I'm going to save this. This is a uh, relief. One file. Okay. And uh, nice that plugin. It, yeah, I I love this how this plugin works. I use it very, very often. The Dynamis utility plugin is very helpful when you are working with Dynamis. Jaime Herrera Castañeda is asking how much detail will an alpha have. I'm gonna show you because I'm gonna use alphas to create the process. How much detail would an alpha have if captured from the, the reference? Okay. I'm gonna use so we have this is the back this is the starting point we have there's different templates where, where I have the maximum depth and the base so next step now it's time to start creating the face so always I start for an eye I have to create the uh, reliefs 
most of the cases, maybe I can say seventy uh, percent of the cases, I start from a three D mess, from the three D model. Then I convert the three D model into a relief. So I don't start, for example, I have seen many tutorials on the net where you start like this. So I'm gonna make you an example. For example, like this. I'm gonna this is going to be. I'm gonna put the image behind. This is going to be the C. Well, I am on the wrong axis. Maybe I should rotate everything like this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I'm going to go to the draw menu. Make the grid size a little bit bigger. Now go into the front back. Click on map one, import, and I'm gonna use the image. Gonna flip it. This is the this is the coin, right? So I'm gonna adjust it, scale it down till match the vertical. Can be something like this. Maybe after we can make this a regular contour, but at this moment it's not important. So I'm gonna make it like this, maybe smaller, vertical, maybe like this. Okay. I recommend to you once you have you once you made all of these adjustments of the settings, save your you're gonna save the uh, CGR file where you're gonna save the grid with a picture attached to it. So I like to save it when it's done. When I this is my setting that I use is I turn the film mode to three, and this is the at its maximum enhanced factor at the maximum, and I'm gonna make it here more or less like this. For example, if I now I have seen some tutorial for some form that where many people start making a a mask. For example, start making painting the mask. For example, for the head, like this. I'm gonna make it very quickly. Just want to explain to you. This is the process that I don't use. So now click on extract, and now you have accept and now it's here this is going to be the starting point so make it you make it thicker uh, this I need to turn this off to make it thicker and from this point where you have a piece of geometry then you start the sculpting you start a sculpting with your with your preferences process of preference so you start making the the different values the cheeks the nose the mouth the the eyes but start making everything by hand so uh, sculpting freely so with uh, freehand sculpting where you start for example i don't know you you start grabbing the clay build up and you start uh, start making the different forms and the different shapes so this takes a lot of time so okay you need to be uh, well skilled on the sculpting to be able to do this to with uh, with success, it it takes a lot of time. I think it's just my opinion, but I don't use this this process. I don't use this process when I talk when we are talking about faces or um, anatomy. Uh, I don't care. It, it it doesn't matter if it's an animal face or a human face. But I don't use this process. So I don't. I'm not going to show you this. So I'm gonna delete this. Okay. And no more questions. Okay, I start. I'm gonna start from this tool we already have prepared. I have here one face. Where is my face here? I have this head. This head is the same head that you can use using this one. It's the same one, but this is mine where I remove the hair and. Uh, remove the the bust so i start from here till till here okay so i always start from this point from this so and i'm going to uh, use the same picture where is my picture here i should rotate it 90 degrees make it bigger 
this is what I what we have the I. And now from now you can use two different ways. You can start uh, turning on the symmetry. You can see now that my symmetry is not on the right axis. So if I am I want to start sculpting at both sides at the same time, I can of course I can change the axis and now I can here, for example, grabbing the mover, I'm gonna adjust the brightness of the image a bit, something more like this. We can start start uh, fitting or start adjusting the this is going to be you can do this or another process that I love to use with the same result okay I'm gonna use this brush the move infinity brush the move infinity brush it's a new brush it was introduced I think uh, two versions before if I if I not wrong and it is uh, one of the main tools that you can use if you are working with reliefs so don't forget to use this brush you're gonna love it I think it's gonna be very very gonna becomes very useful uh, I'm gonna split the, the neck from the head because the angle of the neck is completely different I'm gonna grab a lasso gonna put the neck on a mask and I can split mask points I'm gonna hide this I'm gonna close holes I'm gonna use this I'm gonna use them. now the head should be maybe a bit bigger always uh, the first thing that I adjust that I fit so when I block is the position of the eye. Where is the eye? The eye is here. So now I can start with this, with this brush. This brush, as uh, I am working without symmetry, I'm going to turn this off. But if I move this point, the same thing is happening on the back. So this is going to be, as I said before, very, very useful for sculpting reliefs. Try to follow the contour. The eyes. Well, this is the eye sockets because we still don't have eyeballs. We only have. You know, smooth this a little bit. The tick, the tick is a little bit here because we still need to add the beard. And the, here is the. We already have the. The ear, made, so it's not going to be necessary to sculpt. A ear from scratch, so from zero. So we already have the main shapes, of the. Of the ear, so this is the. The reason why I start from here because I already have so many things already done, so it's not going to be necessary to sculpt the, the mouth, for example, the lips or the ears because they are already there. You can use your base mess of preference of preferences. Thank you. Don't don't mind. <laughs> you don't have to be worried about the front side. We are always worried about this view, so. This is another good thing. This is one of the good things about working with reliefs because I'm going to change now the brush. So we don't care about the the other views. We only care about the front view and the side view. And then when I say side view, I am saying the thickness, not the not the volumes or well, yeah, the volumes, yes, but not not like uh, from the front view. So maybe I can need to readjust this. I'm gonna turn on my back face to close the mouth a little bit. I'm gonna use this maybe with the draw. I'm gonna make more opacity. I think I am using the wrong side. Yeah, yes, like this. I'm using the wrong side. You are right. So let's flip it and uh, 
flip it. Like this. The contour of the profile is going to be very important. If we are go here, if we are stay here, and this is going to be very important and you are looking for a good likeness so now as I have this is the ma I have the maximum maximum brightness of the of the image I am only at this moment I am only worried about the contour so I don't worry about the details inside of the face Okay, the head is too big here. The head should be a little bit below under the hair. So, so this is what we are doing. Maybe we can relax this part a little bit. Maybe we can add here a little bit of more. He, it ha he has more rounded cheeks or something like this. And this is not so pronounce and maybe here I like to use the clay build up without the alpha so I can add here maybe I can gonna subdivide the mess to get a cleaner surface so you don't at this point you don't have to be obsessive with the with the details from the face something is wrong with my ear I'm gonna decrease this now looks better maybe I can inflate a little bit this part this part something yeah more or less something like this is yeah we are just matching the the main volumes with the image behind so let's check let me check the eyes first i'm gonna check your questions now so the the eye it's the expression the position of the eye is going to be very important and always i split the eye the face and the eye with a separate sub tool i'm gonna attach a ball for the eye so i don't sculpt the eye directly on the face he has this kind of and this part is more something like this this part is more pronounced okay we can say that we are we almost got it we still need to add the eye okay so we still add the this this is the reason why it looks looks a strain because we still add the eye and the pupil here. I'm only worried at this point only about the volumes. I don't worry about the details yet. I'm gonna save it. Okay, I'm about how much detail the move infinity brush is a lifesaver. Yeah. Travis, welcome. Yeah. It's, it, it was a very good addition for us who, that uh, we talk, we work with uh, reliefs. Put hotkey on floor. Floor has an it has a hotkey. It already have one uh, here. The floor is uh, shift P. Shift and P is the shortcut for the floor how you did to appear online in the contour of the figure instead of the wax material yeah i made this for example i'm going to turn this on again you can control it with this with this uh, uh, sliders uh, or controls you have the enhance factor where you can control the opacity of the mass you can make it solid or more transparent i like to set this up till the, its maximum value and you can uh, change the enhance opacity where you can control the brightness of the image 
So if you apply the maximum value, so you are only going to be able to see the contour of the mess. This is going to be very handy for, to follow contours. But that, uh, but if you want to, for example, now work on the eye, you should apply a lower value to be able to see through the geometry and be able to see the image uh, behind. So like this, so you can control it like this here. Uh, you're an awesome teacher, keep it up. The great work. Thanks a lot, Luke Laurie. Oh, I really appreciate your works, your support. So it motivates me to make more streams like this one. So I think from this point, I think it's going to be enough. So maybe I can. It ha he has some, looks like some, like a boxer ears or something, right? So it he has. This part, this this part of uh, something more like this. Let's try to follow better the contour of the ears, like this. I think right now it's going to be enough. I gotta check twice. The, the mouth, the mouth is a hard part to make. The mouth, yes. You are making a wrong mouth shapes. It's gonna look very weird. The position of the lips, it's very important. But I think I should push this up a little bit. you have this kind of issues, this is the moment to use the Sculptist Pro. I'm going to delete the subdivisions now. Maybe I can. This is another reason why I like to use the Sculptist Pro when we, I am blocking or when I am just sketching or blocking volumes or like this because you don't need uh, subdivision levels to get uh, a smoother surface just with the uh, with the with the Sculptist Pro, it's gonna be enough. Maybe this depression I have here, I should fill in this gap. Uh, you should be paying attention to this uh, small details, but at the moment I think it's going to be enough. I don't want to be is staying a lot of time. At, uh, only in one process because I would like to show you as more processes as possible. So you can. So okay, we can stay here. Let's save it. Katarina, you are assigned 10 coins in order. I think you mean that you already have an order of 10 coins? Too simple. You are saying that it's too simple to make the coins or the coins are too simple. <laughs> it's a different thing. It's a completely different thing. So this is one we have here where we have already, we only are worried about this. I don't care. I don't care about this face I have here. Most of the time it looks very weird. You can see here the mouth looks like a, a Stallone mouth or something. So we can, you can go, we can go to the next step. Next step is going to because you can see that I'm not I'm not working on the on the original. This is the this is going to be my original. 
this is going to be my original and this is going to be the head the sculpting this is going to be the head I'm gonna save both files so now the step to take is to convert this 3d mess into an alpha so this is very very simple you can go to alpha and click on from mess so you will get this window this floating window maybe I click on frame and okay we already have an alpha so now we can transform the alpha information into another 3d mesh so going coming back to alpha and clicking in to mesh so we are we will get this we will get the plane with the face we were sculpting before now I'm going to squeeze it so from this point it starts in my opinion the important things because when we are you are thinking about reliefs and as, as I said before you are starting from from a 3d mess the first thing that comes to your mind is I have a 3d mess then I squeeze it and I already have at a, a bas relief or a relief but I strongly recommend you don't never do that because you are going to lose a lot of detail it's not going to be the right way to do it so the first things to, to pay attention is the position of the gizmo that's a, it's not the same getting the, the gizmo here than here because I'm going to squeeze the head from this point into this direction so I'm gonna push into this direction. So that's the reason why I'm here at the end of the right. If I am here, I'm on the end of the left, depending on the view that you you are. But for example, from here, you're gonna start squeezing things. And pay attention that you are not destroying the details. For example, I am reaching here. Maybe it here is going to be enough, I think. It's going to be enough. I'm going to append it to the original. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this on. I'm going to mm, 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 click in here, insert here. Where are you? Here. So let's make it bigger. To put it exactly in place. I'm gonna put it to the here a little bit a little bit more till here this is what this is going to be start becoming the, the relief but the problem that we have now is to remember our max depth this one it's going to be this one so i should more or less here look at the nose if i pull it to in we are start losing the map the, the uh, not the mouth the the nose so this is going to be the maximum I can pull in inside but if I check the maximum depth this is the problem that we have this is the maximum depth we can go from here till here but now we are here so we need to uh, squeeze it this amount of geometry so the problem is that we are going to lose a lot of detail but I'm going to show you a way to don't lose so many detail or avoid to lose as as less detail as possible uh, <coughs> can I work with Huion? yes Huion it's a good tablet I think so this is the maximum depth so i'm gonna f start following squeezing into this direction till here maybe a little bit less till here uh, maybe the first thing i'm gonna get rid of this part this part i going to i want to remove this this part of the plane how i do that I use the slice curve brush. You can you need to use this brush with the control shift keys. Alright. So 
uh, we are gonna uh, slice it into two different polygroups so I'm gonna slice it here control shift now with the select rectangle control shift and tap on this polygroup and now delete hidden and to close the hole on the back I'm gonna transform this into a dynamics and I know I'm going to go as I said before with this with the default dynamics button I'm gonna use the plugin dynamics utility and now uh, we can say that 1.5 million is going to be a good starting point it's going to be a good resolution for for sculpting adding detail and many other things maybe I, I always try to stay below 2 millions but 1.5 million it's a good option so click on dynamics here Zbrush is going to start calculating making his thing his magic and we already have this I'm gonna try to get rid of this jagged edges. What you, the best way to avoid this is with the smooth picks and smooth valleys brushes. Now smooth picks with the without the sculptures pro. I'm gonna start smoothing a little bit. The good thing about this smooth picks brush is because you are gonna be able to start smoothing the surface, but without losing or destroying the detail the cavities in this case because we are only polishing as in smoothing the highest points the peaks of the mess so let's start cleaning this we don't care about the other parts of the head because they are going to be hidden by the hair and by the beard maybe what I can do is to with the move brush and back face I'm gonna try to close the mouth recalculate dynamics and now here we have the let's smooth peaks again and another good thing about the good peaks because when you are making reliefs you start from something like this from a block when you have something like this and we are looking for more rounded so the, we're going to try to change the profile so don't get this kind of uh, fake or I don't know how to call it as to looks I don't like it how it looks like so I it's preferred when you are watching the the, the, profile, the, the relief like here like from the from the side instead of having this it's much better to start to start growing the profile something like this so you just start growing start reaching the highest point from zero to its highest point uh, like this instead of like this so this brush is very useful to start removing these corners till getting this shape so you can here for example here in the eye same on the ear but in the ear is not so important because something like this Cantarilla mm -mm -mm. is saying hollow what do you mean with hollow Need some information about oh you need some information about hollow in metal to make things hollow to make the designs hollow inside one month total work 20, 35 designs in word in one month a lot of work yeah uh, how to make things hollow i'm going to show you on my on, on future streams because uh, i i think i said it on my previous streams that I, it is the only application, external application that I use, different than ZBrush. I use Mesh Mixer to make things hollow. Then I import it back inside of ZBrush and start making booleans. But we'll be better to talk about it with a real example on any of my future streams. Another way that you can remove these corners is I use this brush, the Polish. The Polish brush is a default brush. You can you find it here, BP. B and P, you will find it here. 
but you can use it in combination with the all key with the all key you can start like this i'm going to make an, an example here for example it's like a it works like a sandpaper or a sanding sanding tool where you can start sanding into one direction of course when you are something anything you start sanding in this direction and also and after you start sending into this direction you are sending different that's the same way that you need to use the the brush but in this case it's not going to be necessary because here the forehead here we have the okay let's come back here where we are still having the same problem we need to go now here Pay attention to the to the nose. Maybe with the nose we can pull out a little bit. Maybe here. Ah, I have the back face active. I'm gonna do it and make it again. Because here we have with the transpose line, I can measure this point to this point to this point. We have we have a half of a millimeter this distance, so it's going to be dangerous if we are thinner like this. So this should be the we can't make the tip of the nose thinner than this than this point than we are now. Maybe we can pull this out okay like this so the important things are happening here if we are watching here from the side the important things are happening from this point to this point we can say from this point to this point are happening the important things I, I mean the details of the of the eye the details of the nose the details of the mouth the ear etc but we can remove this part to make the head even thinner than than it is now so how i do this i use a uh, old-fashioned way of working is the with the transpose line instead of the gizmo you can you, can, you know that you can find the transpose line turning this off so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna select the line put the line here from the maximum point to the right the x starting position is going to be very important so it's not the same to start from here or start from here or start from here it looks like you are uh, making an anchor point so you are blocking the mess from the starting point like this and now the magic of the transpose line i'm a very supporter of the transpose line i love it how it works you are going to be able to do many many different things with the transpose line and one of the things that i do with on the reliefs is i press now the shift on the all key shift plus alt both together i'm gonna to grab this this red dot here I'm gonna start pulling in this and I'm gonna use instead of this I'm gonna use the white in the middle you can see that I'm not squeezing the mess I am just I don't know how to say it's relocating or uh, changing the thickness but without affecting the details or destroying the details so I can say something like this what I can do now is from this point to this point I can say to start you can say what I what I can do is so the face is still the details are still there so we can now I can pull it to the right again adjust it by hand at some point it's going to be necessary to make things by hand without the help of any tool or the, or the transpose line like this and now where we are maybe like this is gonna be something realistic in terms of uh, total depth let's see where we are now from the base 
to the highest point. Now we are 1.1 1, 1 .1 millimeter. Maybe I was very uh, optimistic with 0.5 millimeter. Maybe we can we can make this squeeze this a little bit more. Remember, uh, transpose line, shift and alt both together. I made something strange there, so maybe I should. Maybe I don't want to destroy too much the details of the of the eye. But what I can do is try to make th this part from this thick to this thick. Let's try to make it thinner. So the way to do this, the same as before, with the transpose line again. Now from this point to this point, it's going to be, it, remember that it's very important, the starting point. The, po the, the point where you start dragging the line, it's going to be the anchor point. So nothing is going to happen behind, in this case, on this area of the of the transpose line so I'm gonna start squeeze this and now I squeeze this and here I squeeze and now I squeeze this so now I think that we are we are there this is going to be the starting point let's save this Uh, I the, the way I do this is the transpose line is remember that we we went from here from here to here and now of course at this point it's it's time to start re-sculpting to start detailing now it's time to start detailing the surface, for example, it's time to start sculpting this part. For example, this portion of the the eye should be a little bit more inside. Here, I can start. making things like this, making the eyebrow, it's a little bit thicker, like this, like this, maybe here I have And it's very important to start using. I never, I barely never use the default smooth brush. Yeah, I always use the smooth peaks and the smooth valleys, Comb combining them depending on if I'm looking forward to smooth the peaks or the valleys. You can find them here. You you go to your light box inside of the brush, and inside of the smooth brush folder, you will find them here. The smooth valleys and the smooth peaks. So I'm gonna put the eye because it's the, it's going to help. I'm gonna grab a sphere. I split mass points. Let's put it inside of the eye socket. Like this it looks like a, like an engineer from from Alien without the hair, <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm gonna use the mask. Now I can, we can be, we can use the, the image behind to know that we are putting the eye in the right place.
So now it's time to start sculpting and sculpting. Another, another. I'm gonna remove this alpha. Another uh, shortcut that I use with the move brush is with you're using the alt key, you can pull in, pull out the mesh like this. It's not going to be necessary to put, use this view. From the front view, you can start pulling or pushing the geometry from the camera view. Let me know if you don't understand anything or you think that it's not necessary what I am doing. But then don't exist any magical trick where you can transform a 3D mess into a bas relief. You always need to sculpt and make things by hand. So most of the time people are thinking that if I already have a picture, I can convert a picture with a, to a grayscale image, then I make an alpha, then I create the alpha and I already have the the relief, but believe me, that thing never works or never works well for me, depending on your level of of quality that you want or your customer is requesting to you. But uh, the, the magic uh, doesn't exist when we need to make relief, so we still need to start the sculpting always. But the bad thing about this process is the main volume of the head, of the face are already there. The only thing from now you should be just be working, refining the shapes and maybe tweaking a little bit the some parts. Where is my the, the ear is not on the right place, should be here. But you already have maybe we can say more than fifty percent of the head of the face already there. So now for now you only have to start refining the shapes and start adding the details. For example here. I'm gonna I'm gonna use a mask to create this cap we already have here. I'm gonna pull this in. And, 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 and I think I have the tragus. It's not good. It should be here. And the elix. Maybe we can start grabbing here and start adding the. And this bar should be something. I can maybe I can use a mask to grab the ear. And we are gonna Need, we're going to need a bit of room here on the back of the ear. <coughs> this is not so hard to do the hair. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have planned to do the hair, of course. I am thinking I'm going to show you different ways of do the hair. Oh, well, okay, it should be the, the, the. I'm going to so. I think it's going to be enough for the face because as I said before, I don't want to stay a lot of time working on at only one part of the process. So I know that the head, that the face is still needs to be, still needs a lot of work. 
still need some work to start refining the, the likeness on the on the shape but I'm gonna jump into the hair now like this like this as I you can notice in you can notice I use a lot the back face for sculpting reasons and now I am working with Dynamis, I am working with uh, 1.3 million I think it's not going to be necessary to to add more Okay, uh, I'm gonna save this. Maybe the 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 eye is not good yet. I should put a disclosure here. Let me check first if the position is good. Compare with the image. Looks like it's good enough. Okay, let's save. Okay, so keep what I this is my part of my process is to when I am working with uh, when I have to make uh, reliefs, I always think about how can I split the design into as many parts as possible. As we already did, we already have the head. Here, this is going to be one subtool. We have one, but I'm going to use another subtool for the hair. The hair, it's going to be another subtool. I'm going to use another subtool for the beard. It's going to be another subtool, and of course, I'm going to use another subtool for the neck. Like this, and uh, they have this this band. It's going to be another soft tool, another soft tool, of course, and these stripes, they are going to be another soft tool. And of course, the eye, it's another soft tool. So I, we're going to start chopping the design and to start making different soft tools. So to start creating the hair, I'm going to start creating the, the necessary soft tool for the hair with the same with, with the same mess as the head. I'm going to make things. Again, a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make a duplicate. I'm gonna turn on the solo. I'm gonna make a mask for the hair. With the lasso, it's going to be enough. The hair is going to be more or less this part of the head. What I do now is to hide the a mask point, delete hidden and recalculate the dynamics so we already have this so i'm gonna use the gizmo with the control and the white rectangle to add some thickness here make a is, is at any point it's happening this don't worry so the only thing that you can do uh, have to do is go into uh, geometry modify topology click on close holes where it is here and now, now you can make the dynamics now. now. And looks like it's good. And to remove the ear, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this brush. This is another brush that I use very often. It's the trim dynamic brush. It's gonna start removing this part. Let's start making something like this and start make things. Chup, chup, chup like this now we are working with less than a million it's gonna be enough let's push this in 
I'm using now the alt key in combination with the Now I think it's better to use the move infinity brush instead of the default move brush because remember that we are moving uh, on the back at the same time. So this is going to be the curls. Still needs to be made, something like this. And I'm going to turn this off dynamic. I hate when you move things things disappear on the screen. You can turn this off the dynamic button here. Okay, dynamic. Let's uh, put the neck. For the neck, I think we can use, uh, we can use a, a cylinder for the neck. I'm gonna grab this cylinder. Put it here, the split mass points. Let's rotate it, squeeze it. like this move infinitive again I'm gonna tell you why I select a cylinder now when I'm finished it has a reason should be more closer to the surface now I can grab the same brush with the back face, like this. Maybe I can, you know, with the move, I'm gonna try to pull this out a little bit. Pull this out more to the border here. this and like this and this point should be thinner like this this is the reason why I selected a cylinder is because if you are saying here, what I see is uh, two different planes. When I'm watching this, I'm going to paint it black, like this. I am watching this, another plane. It's another plane. And when you are selecting a, a cylinder, you already have the two planes when you are getting the cylinder. Here, this is one plane, and this is another plane. That's the reason why I selected a cylinder instead of uh, an sphere, for example. Let's uh, com now convert into Dynamis, and now we can H polish. We already have the shape we are looking for from the beginning. It's not necessary to create it. That's the reason why I grab a sphere in uh, and a cylinder instead of. Uh, and a sphere. For the neck, yes, we are around half of a million. It's going to be enough. Sub tool, soft tool, no sub tool. Sub tool, sub tool is uh, sub tool. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. Like this, and the the hair. goes here till here and it has a little s an open a white s here and here we have this like this like this oh, we already I can make this corner a little bit sharper. You use the polish to start sanding this part a little bit. 
Okay, we already have the neck, the hair. I still need to make the beard. Fix this. Now it's just a matter of follow a sculpting, creating the the forms. I'm gonna create now the 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 bird. I'm gonna grab the face, the same process as before. Make a duplicate. I need this sub tool, but without this, a little window for the for the for the mouth. Hide polygons like this, and I'm gonna I can remove this one and control drag to create a new. Can happen things like this, but no problem. We can, for example, grab this and move infinity with the back face. We're gonna start making the block we want. I the way to get rid of this kind of weird surface for destroying things I always say that the Sculptist Pro is amazing for destroy things like this you can now we can convert it into dynamics again we can now turn this off and now we can start getting a smoothing a better piece of geometry start polishing and uh, let's inflate it to like this the bird is thin it's very thin but i prefer instead of a sculpt the bird directly on the face surface i prefer to use another sub tool because with a new sub tool i have control to make what i'm doing now to know to decide where are the limits of the bird to have more control in one word can i use the same brush as before train dynamic to start destroying the corners and this is going to be the and uh, here have a plane the plane of the bear goes here like this it's a little bit higher I think So if I this one this thing should be here. This is going to be a negative. If I turn this on, the booleans, this is what we are doing. I, we have a problem now with the with the hair. The hair is not thick enough. What we can do is I can grab we can use the same process as before make an OBB with a transpose line we can start pull it back the same with the face like this 
and the same with the bird shift and alt and this is what we get maybe we should make this corners a little bit more rounded we can use the polish brush to start sanding this part if not it looks like a, I can say some kind of cookie finishing it looks like a like a cookie I have lost this portion Because when things looks too blocky or looks like more like a cookie, I think. I think and from this view, maybe the tick needs to be a little bit higher. And from this view, like this. Okay, the thing that we already have, maybe something is going on with the forehead. head should be more like this maybe even with the mouth okay let's save this uh, did you uh, miss I sun 3d is asking at what resolution I am doing the Dynamis? A qué resolución haces el Dynamis? Um, uh, I have a rule. This is my my own rule. That it is is uh, for example from one polygon or maybe we can say from one polygon to one million rule. So if I need detail, I always will be around one million or three millions. I think it's not going to be necessary to add more than three millions dense dynamics. So if we, for example, if for the beard and for the for the beard that it it has detail but not too many detail, maybe we can stay here around 800 case, thousand polygons for the beard. I, I'm saying for the hair that we have more more shapes and more forms we keep, we are going to need maybe 1 million or 1.5 million so that's the reason why i always take the 1 million as a reference if i if i need detail i will stay between 1 million and 3 millions but uh, i need detail but not too many i'm going to be around 400 500 k and 1 million between those uh, references that's the reason why i like to use the, the dynamic utility because i can select the amount of polygon instead of the dynamics resolution for example if i decide that for the bird is going to be enough to work with uh, 7000 700000 polygons i can go to the tip login type here 0.7 and click on dynamics and now i have a dynamics of 700000 polygons to work with for example if i start just making blocking the main forms of an sculptor if I uh, of a figure of an anatomy if I I'm gonna start from 200 I can go to here and change here to 0.2 click on dynamics and I will get a new mess with 200,000 polygons so I don't care about the dynamics resolution I am big worried about how many polygons I need depending on the level of details that I need to make it has sense, I think. Okay, perfect. So, I'm gonna start working. I'm gonna reduce the intensity. It has a kind of fault here. For example, I'm gonna I'm gonna try. I think the hair is gonna be a good option for using a destructor brush. 
I'm gonna try to use this tractor brush. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm going to know how to use it because it's a brush that I don't use it very often, but I think it's gonna be a good choice for the hair detail. Let me check if I am doing things well. Things are on the right place. Checking with the with the position of the nose. Let's let's use the move infinitive better. Like this. I I think that I am doing something wrong with the mouth. Let me see. If I the mouth is. Yeah, minus it should be more here. And the lip is here is more, more pronounced. It's more like this. Let's use the back face to create the lip. Yes, more something like this and the, the most touch is thin, something like this. For the, okay. I love, gracias Maria. I love you, we're so into the fun. I'm glad to hear that because sometimes when I'm trying to explain what I'm doing, I don't know if you are understanding me or you are thinking that I'm doing a useful thing or, but I always try to, this is one thing that I learned during my professional career, it's that um, it's, uh, I try to find the fastest way to do the things or the simplest way in to try to give a good, a good uh, turnaround times when when delivering the the project so i know that you can be here spending endless hours detailing and detailing or making in, uh, very artistical processes uh, sculpting things from a scratch from a sphere from a cube but uh, in terms of uh, professionality i think it's much better to make things faster of course with the necessary quality but uh, this is one thing that you learn during your professional life so try to make things uh, fast and, and well and uh, with a high level of, of quality this is my my mentality if, and if you find it useful more than glad that Okay, I think that I'm gonna forget the head for a while. And I'm gonna start making the hair. So what time is it? So 30 minutes till the end. Okay, as I said before, the extractor brush, the extractor brush, maybe it's going to be a good way, a good moment to use this brush. I'm gonna start to try to remember how this brush works i'm gonna yeah, this is a i'm gonna try i'm gonna try it i'm gonna try it but i think it's gonna it's not going to be the final process that i'm gonna use but this the way i'm gonna use it is just to show you that could be a good application okay follow working on the head excuse me <laughs> because it's addictive i think when you start observing the reference you follow observing your model and you start watching mistakes mistakes and mistakes and you always try to, to fix them and the ear should more work as well It has a very strange ear, I think. Go 
reviews. Um, what is the resolution of your monitor? My monitor is HD resolution. My it's uh, 22 inches. Wacom Cintiq. Extractor brush. Yeah, this I barely use it. Very since the beta testing, I think I never use it again. And I'm gonna try to use it now. So I'm gonna start. Making this part first. But for the extractor because why I I think the extractor is going to be a good choice because I'm gonna try to make one only one part of the hair detail for example this I'm gonna try to make one I can extract the detail and I'm gonna start replicating populating uh, the head with this process this is what process that I don't like uh, I think as I said before this is I think this is not going to be the final process that I'm going to use because it's going to look like uh, a bit too artificial too much digital made because it's going to be all of the hair is going to be very similar I prefer to start making one by one but I, I'm going to try how it works so for example I make one detail here one stroke to a stroke and three strokes. One, two, and three. Let's cut this a little. Let's try to detail a little bit like this the tips. Yeah, I'm. I'm agree with you. I'm thinking it's not going to be the the best way. I am still trying to find which is the best way to use the extractor brush. I think I know that some of the C brush users are already using use it for many different purposes, but I think it's not going to be for me. It's not one of my favorite. So now we need to use it. You have to do this pressing the G. And now you're going to start grabbing the detail. Uh, you should uh, now needs to be waiting. Now the alpha is made. But always my alphas looks like this. That's the reason why I don't like it. Because for example, if I now increase the intensity, now I'm going to be able to start populating the hair like this this is the, the reason why I thought that could be a good a good option to a star for example let's start I'm gonna draw 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 here reduce the intensity of the image so I can start adding here one here another one here another one there so we start putting all of the details on the surface. Uh, it's very exact, full fashion and terrible. Because I feel like you use technique that also exists. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm very glad to read that, Maria. Because this is one thing that I always say. I think my my way of thinking, my way of using ZBrush is the, with the same mm, the same way that you can use, for example, when you are carving wax or when you are modeling with uh, with clay. So I always thinking about how to, where can I find inside of ZBrush the tool that I use in, in real in, in the real life. For example, a sandpaper, a grinding tool, or a sanding uh, tool, or many other other things. A ruler, a caliper, I think that this, this is a, my techniques are based on on that uh, way of thinking. Maybe, I don't know if I, I need more light. But uh, I don't like the results with this, with this brush. So I prefer, I think, 
I'm gonna start again. Do, 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 do. And uh, I think that the way that I can start making by hand. So with the clay build up without the alpha. We already have here the guy. Maybe I can apply more intensity and less focal shift to get something more like we are looking for. More like this. Maybe 0 0.01. Yeah. Let's less a little bit more focal shift. Less intensity. So now you can you can see that you can start making this little I don't know how to say it curls or twist things. So you only need to start blocking. Okay, keep in mind now I'm just uh, I can use the snake hook here. To make this kind of curl here, okay. So now we can this it, this one has a kind of S. Of course, for the first time, the hair is not going to look like the like the original, right? So be patient. The important thing is to try to recognize which is the, the flow that the artist try to follow on from the original the sculpture. Because it looks like some are coiled inside of the of the others. So you need to read the, the, the directions like this. This one should one is something like this. One, it has one, two, three. Where I am here, I have one here. Here, I have another one. Looks like it's more like this. Like this. And then, then, then. I try to work as fast as I can, so don't bore, to don't be too boring when I am doing during the streams the same thing. Then you can rip. It just looks like they are coiled in this direction, and what is happening there? It is something like this and something like this so say one two three here here we have one another in top of the, the other like this and uh, here I think the hair is this hair is interesting to sculpt This here is a little bit more blurred. It's not so clear. Looks like this area of the coin was more damaged. Okay, let's see. Here is not so important because it's going to be behind the band, but anyway, I'm gonna try to.
Um, how do you consider the idea of doing some of sort of collaboration piece with other artists? Yeah, sure. I will glad to do it. Will be nice. Will be great. I have made some collaboration with another artist, but with especially with Thomas will be very interesting. Ringlets is the term. Ringlets is the 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 coils of the of the uh, on the hair. Okay, once we have once we are here, maybe I'm gonna try to for the curling of the hair. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks, because. I know some words in English. I, I think that I know to explain myself what I want to say, but my vocabulary in some cases, it's limited. But I hope you are understanding to me well with my broken English. Okay. So, like this looks like, well, uh, looks maybe should look good, but not look enough yet. Not good enough yet. So I'm gonna try to follow the right contour. Thank you, Mike. This is a a great compliment because I, I just try to to use the verbs in the right way, using the right words, but uh, sometimes the right words comes to my mind quickly, but in other, in other cases I completely block it, that I don't know what I am saying. I know that I have said something wrong, I have used a wrong verb or a wrong uh, article or something, but I try to do my best, but I really appreciate that. You say that my English is good enough. Okay, let's say. Okay, like this. Let's uh, now recalculate dynamics, control drag. Now we have a new dynamics. What I can say now, and we kind of start losing a little bit of detail. You can see when I control drag, we am, I am losing a bit of detail. What I'm going to do is, uh, as we already have the right resolution, now the 165 resolution is giving to me uh, more than 800,000 polygon. Now, maybe at this point, it's a good point to start adding more resolution to the mess. But instead of increasing the resolution and don't know how many I need to add, will be better to coming back to the plugin. And add, now I need 1.5 millions why do i need 1.5 million because mm -hmm. i am thinking about to start adding detail and start getting into detail uh, part of the process so if i prefer to don't apply any blur and with any modifications yeah i turn this off it's a tiny hidden button you have here with 1.5 now you convert this into a new dynamics and it's exactly the same as it was before almost exactly the same i don't lose any detail or and the mess doesn't shrink as you said before i don't remember who said that but uh, you can say if you are working on with the right resolution it's not going to be possible to shrink the mess i think what i'm going to do now is to inflate a little bit them i'm going to inflate them to make them closer one to another to try to fill in the gaps between each stroke. I'm using the yellow square with the control key. Inflating, control drag to recalculate the mess. And now looks like they are uh, losing strokes. You can see uh, as, I, as I have been doing is start making one stroke, two stroke, three strokes. At the moment, it looks like many many different strokes together doesn't look like uh, real hair or <laughs> noodles yeah but i wanted when i'm gonna try to to integrate them is with the move 
and the back face mask again i'm use i use a lot of the back face for 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 sculpting i'm gonna try to pull them to different directions to start blending them together and I start filling the gaps between each stroke and I start trying to start creating the mass of hair instead of uh, noodles <laughs> yeah something like this here and there I start looking more like hair, I think. What do you think? It looks better, right? So now, control drag again. Oops, right. It's time for saving. I don't want to lose. And now what I can do is start using the Polish uh, Smooth Picks. I start smoothing the picks to try to get rid this kind of texture I have on the strokes, those little lines. But you can see that when we are using the Smooth Picks brush, I, we are smoothing the surface, but we are not destroying and we are not uh, I don't know how to say we are not melting or we are we are not fading the the details and now with the smooth bodies I'm gonna start smoothing the bodies to start blending them even more the strokes now I we are blending the gaps between each a stroke now let's try to inflate them again you can see how I am inflating that's the reason why I'm using Dynamis because I'm always uh, stretching squeezing and destroying the mess so during the sculpting process I'm always making a new mess during the, the sculpting process that's the reason why many in few cases I use subdivision levels i think in some cases yes M most of the time the cases that i when i use subdivision levels is when i am sculpting figures when i have for example i have the main body with different accessories and the clothes the weapons and things like this and i need to optimize the workflow to don't make the the total poly count too high so this much better to work with subdivision levels but in cases like this uh, where we have few sub tools i think in my opinion is not necessary to work with subdivision levels just my personal view right cardi locks what does it mean it's, yes okay now and uh, now it's time for start final adjustments with the move brush to start making and maybe the pinch brush is going to be a good a good idea because and uh, now we have something like a tube something like a tube shape and i'm looking for more something like a, like a piece of i don't know like a horn shape or i don't know this, uh, this the pinch brush is going to be good, maybe with a uh, more intensity. It's time to start making horns, or I don't know how to say it. Here and there, so watching the observing the the reference, we are. making things we are stretching the strokes so given the beginning of the stroke is wider than the end 
of the stroke so of course this is just the starting point so we need to be here spending more time refining the shape but just want to to show you um i think let me say i think that the shape of the head is not good i can't come back to the to play with opacity because the contour of the head is very important because it looks like the weight of the hair it's very important to catch this kind of finishing it's not just making the hair like a helmet so the hair has movement or in this case weight because it is a stretch by uh, by a uh, by a band so it needs to be and in this point looks like it is should be a little bit higher and at this point looks like more like a brain texture as well i think so before it looks like a noodles and now it looks like like a brain shape or brain texture texture I think that it's time to start refining the shape to start that thing looks like more like a like a hair instead of noodles of or or, or brains and that's not your rule thank you very much Theodore with your tutorial, how I will be at point. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I, I, I will help you as more as you want, as you need. I'm sorry. So I'm here just for help you. Or it's not just not not for showing to you which is the right way or which is the best way to do the, the, the things. It's just to show in my, my way to do the things. Hope you are finding it useful. Okay, so uh, for the final touches of the hair, I'm gonna use this brush, the, the um, SK cloth. I'm gonna change the alpha to the 39, I prefer. Better how it works. And I'm gonna duplicate the alpha. I'm gonna change this value. I'm gonna use two alphas instead of one. You can find this control here. Modify. You can see here the horizontal tiles and the vertical tiles. If I like we can use things like this we can make things for now for hair it's very handy to do this I'm gonna increase the intensity i'm gonna reduce the focal shift i'm gonna start breaking the the noodle looking finishing making things like this maybe with less intensity so it's you can see you can start breaking maybe more intensity yep following the same contour of course you need to follow the, the same flow of the strokes So now with this process, you are just breaking the flat surface with this kind of rake finishing. Trick, trick, maybe not so long. The tail of the nut of the mouse like this.
So you can see now it looks like more like here, right? Start looking here instead of strength things. When I always recommend you when I'm you are making uh, strokes for hair, for example, I'm gonna make you a hair an example. One thing that I learned is, for example, if you have something like this, this is going to be your main stroke. Try to avoid to make strokes parallel or try to follow 100% the, the original paths. For example, this path, I mean this path. So try to don't do this. Try to don't do this. When you are making a strokes for start sculpting hair, doesn't matter if it's a short hair or long hair, that's one thing that I find I found useful. So instead of this is the original path, and always try to break the path, making this. It start, instead of it start from here and finish here, exactly in the middle. I recommend to you to start here and end here. And I use another color here, here to here. So always try to make things like this. Try to break the the lines. I'm going to show you what I am saying with a real stroke. So this is the stroke that we have. So we can say something like this. Looks nice. So in some areas could be good enough. But instead of this, following this contour, try start to stay here, open here and close here. With a bigger press, of course. You can see it's like you are twisting. You are making, you are creating a twisting, twisting effect. Maybe with a bigger brush, like this. Like this, the same here. So I'm follow, starting here, and now I'm ending here. Instead of starting here and ending here, so from here to here. For example, like this, like this. I'm gonna zoom out the same, like this. You can hear the path. This this is a very good example. Instead of doing this, do this. So closer to the edge. Uh, in this point and in this point and further from this point and from another point, I don't know. And here again. This is a uh, works very well with uh, with hair curvy hair or when you are sculpting animals fur on animals for reliefs or for your uh, figures okay it's time to start thinking about the finishing Let's hurry up to this part. This is the thing that I said at the beginning of the streaming. This is the magic the tips or magic tricks don't exist. So if you put time of what you are doing, start sculpting things by hand with a good technique will will add a lot of value to your models I think because talking about reliefs because people think that uh, you have a picture you can transform this into a into a relief and nope it is not possible uh, 
that's awesome. Thank you, Bobin. Uh, can you share what screen draw over software you are using? I'm using Epic Pen. Epic, you can find it. It's very. It's a free application. You can very easy to find. It's Epic Pen. Epic Pen. This. A big pen. I'm gonna review your questions in case I miss anything. Yeah, I will finish. We'll, we'll finish up with a different Mac app, of course. If I, for example, I can use, I like to use this one. No, not this one. The metal. This one with uh, with the render. Uh, inside of the render, we can go preview ambient occlusion. Uh, well, I prefer to use this one instead of I, I, I already have one Mac app that works very well for this. Is this one with an ambient occlusion active? That's intensity. It's going to start looking better with this kind. I probably, I, maybe I would need to use to put the band to know if I am making the hair. So I start refining the hair with the band. So adding the, the detail. I think the, the eye is still need to be reworked a little bit. I don't like how it looks like, the, the eye look good enough when I can make it a pupil let's make it this it's more looking at the front like this and I think I can grab for example any of the matte caps I have for example, so you use, for example, this Mac cup, gray. I'm gonna turn this off. If I grab the material settings, modifiers, the cavity, this is the color, looks like uh, more. No, this is the cavity, the cavity detection. Return section base. I'm not sure where they are, where are like this. Okay, there you go. With the cavity, and this is the B, should be more. No, no, it's just this one. Is the A. But the, I think I should use uh, standard material to be able to play with the with the, with the, with the with the specular. This is the cavity. The cavity should be more like this. I don't remember. I think I'm not sure that if I if I can set the cavity inside of the default material. I'm not sure. It's been a long time since I don't tweak any material settings. Material radios. I think on the Mac apps, it's quite easy to to get. But with the with the best render, I think you can use it but cavity intensity cavity radius okay uh, can you ask your company you can show the toy sculpt you worked on that have already been released yeah I already asked them and they don't allow me to to post anything about them. I was making a Star Wars bust with, uh, I, I think I made 
maybe 15 different bursts for a Star Wars collectible collection. Uh, I also made a collection from the from Dragon Ball and uh, Naruto. I made many many different characters from from that uh, franchise or franchise. I don't know how to say. It. Okay, so let's come back to the to the original. I think one last touch that I can take to refine the. Because when we are making jewelry, we should be thinking about the final product. So, for example, if I am watching on the screen that the things look uh, uh, very clean and artificial, because the original image it has a texture and it is damaged for 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 the usage and, the, and because this is a very old coin, because we are. We need to keep in mind that we are going to cast it, we are going to print it, we are going to lose detail, we are going to cast it, we are going to lose detail. And for example, we are going to get this kind of finishings where we have at some point we have some flattened things like this. We can add this kind of imperfections on the 3D, but I think it's going to be easier to get this kind of finishings on the real piece after polishing so it's not gonna going to be a good idea to to lose detail before the printing process but okay i think at some areas it's gonna be okay because the, the only thing that i'm doing now is try to break in the pattern because i'm just watching lines because when we are breaking the line and some points we are adding more uh, a more realistic finishing but we are polishing the surface like this of course we can add the kind of texture with the noise maker if we go to noise maker we can where where are you here noise noise scale we can start adding this kind of it's going to look like more like the real piece like this Still, there is something I don't like, but okay. I will try to. We will try. We will follow with this on next streaming next Wednesday. I'm gonna save this first. So don't lose anything. There is a pretty decent metal mat cap here. Let me check it out. Yeah, metal with kind of. Looks looks nice. Are they mat caps? Yeah, mat caps. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put an eye here. There are many ways to do to use mat caps or to tweak materials. I have some here, tweak by myself. This one. Or, I don't know, there are many, so many that it is hard to choose the the perfect one or or the right one. Okay, so next day, next Wednesday, I go, I will be here streaming, same hour, same day. Uh, maybe for next day we will finish this. We will talk about more about textures, about to add the texture with the surface noise. I will finish the beard. Uh, we'll be refining the the shapes of the face, but I'm gonna try to work by myself during my free time to don't bore you on the stream making the same thing. And we will be making an overview about what I did today with the, another examples, maybe 
talking about reliefs. And um, we will prepare this for 3D printing and answer your questions. So maybe we can be talking about completely different things. But uh, the idea is to follow with this guy next Wednesday. So uh, you can, I think that you already have seen my my previous streams. I will show you where you can grab them and you can go here to the to the Pixel Logic website. You can go to the. I'm gonna close this on Zebra's Live. Inside of the presenters tab, tab. Here you will find my face so, somewhere. Here, here. And here you can rewatch my previous stream when I was making two different pendants. And don't forget to subscribe to the Pixology channel to stay tuned for future streamings for many uh, awesome artists. Well, you can find many different techniques for many different applications. I hope that uh, the stream has been useful for you. Uh, don't hesitate to leave your comments on the comment sections below or send me uh, your email for your question. You can reach me on my social media pages here in on this into the same this is the same place. You can find my Facebook. Uh, you can find my Facebook uh, uh, place. You can find my Twitter, my Instagram, my Behance. You can find my Pinterest, and you can find my YouTube channel. So you can reach me through many different places. And uh, again, thank you all to being here watching my, my stream. And next day, we will follow with this ancient face adding the beard and more things. So again, thank you. And uh, uh, gracias Jesús, gracias Kronos, thank to you, and uh, see you next Wednesday. See you next Wednesday, same hour, same place, and with the same thing, but different techniques or almost refining the techniques that we show we were making today. But uh, stay safe, have a nice day, and see you next Wednesday. Bye.